However, when we go into a more regional supply chain, coupled with large contiguous land mass, so if we look at this massive land mass here that is contiguous, it's all physically connected on the ground, then there are more ground options available. And as these emerging economies are developing, we saw how much trade is intra-ASEAN. We also know there's a lot of intra-Asia trade. As these are developing, we need to look further ahead and see what could happen. So in the developed regions, Europe and North America, they have very sophisticated ground transportation networks for freight across contiguous landmass. Western Europe, multimodal, US and, North Amer and uh, the rest of North America, intermodal, road and rail, ground transportation. These are within contiguous landmass and they are also part of free trade agreement areas. So the cross-border processes are relatively smooth. So when we get to emerging market, large contiguous land mass, we are going to gradually be catching up to the sophisticated ground rail and road networks that are happening in the US and, and in, uh, Europe. And therefore, over time, we could well see a migration of some air freight and sea freight to road and rail freight. This is the Pan-Asia Rail Network, Pan-Asia Road Network. The challenge here, different to the intermodal system in, the, in the North America and uh, multimodal in Europe, is that border crossings are challenging. Every time you cross a border, there's an opportunity for delay, for additional cost, and for damage or loss of goods. And these borders can be very challenging in that respect. A couple of new areas that are developing on this huge landmass. I think this is very interesting what's happening here. This is very interesting what's happening here because there's a lot of money involved. There's the big boys from here involved. And once this gets underway, we have a ground land bridge from China all the way down through here to a major container port that the Chinese are investing in. And we have, then we skip out all this journey here for our ocean freight. Okay. Straight into the Arabian Sea. The other one, of course, that we've known about for some time is the Eurasia land bridge, road and rail. The particular challenge with this one is that you are crossing, I think you cross at least 10 national borders on this journey. And at every border, there's customs, it's an opportunity for delay, for loss, and for additional cost. But as they mature over time, and there are more and more multilateral free trade agreements in place, then these may become, well, become viable alternatives. So I think we'll see some modal shift over and above the traditional air and sea shift. So, what might we do about this? Well, I think there's three areas that I'd suggest we could focus on in order to deal with all this change. So we've got fewer miles, more moves, we've got modal shifts, we've got additional complexity. So how might we be able to help our customers over and above the day-to-day -day bread and butter business of moving freight? And I've identified three areas. These, again, are areas that customers are challenged with. So first of all, the complexity. As they are reconfiguring their supply chains, they are going into and out of new areas. So they need knowledge and expertise to help them work out the lie of the land on the ground in a new territory. So complexity, we can help with the complexity. Secondly, coming back to this visibility, the information flows and the connectedness of those information flows is of paramount importance for customers, brands, retailers, manufacturers to see through the complexity of the supply chain as to what's going on. <laughs> and thirdly, I think the traditional competitive advantage of medium-sized forwarders is agility. 
we can move and respond much faster than the big guys. We have the flexibility, we have the responsiveness, we have the customer focus, we have the decision making in our hands, and therefore we can provide agility to the customer. My corporate career, I, I enjoyed it, but I was working for two giants. I worked for DHL and I also had the privilege of working for UPS. Decision making took days, if not weeks. You can make decisions in your businesses in minutes and hours. So this agility is a key thing when there are so many moving parts. So that concludes my sharing with you into the regionalization of cargo traffic.